If your landscapes sometimes turn out flat, even after you've edited them, I've got an easy Photoshop technique that anyone can use to instantly give them depth. But why do some photos turn out looking flat in the first place? When you remove the third dimension of a landscape scene by capturing it in a two dimensional photograph, what you're left with is mostly down to the light, color and contrast to communicate that depth. So let me show you a quick experiment and then I'll give you the technique. I've copied, pasted and resized a rock from this photo twice and placed both of those copies into the sky here. Now let's assume for a moment that these rocks were really floating in the sky and this was the original photograph. Now, as they are, can you tell if one is closer to the camera than the other based purely on their shape or which one is bigger than the other? How about now when I turn on this curves adjustment that I prepared earlier? Is this small rock actually massive, but just way off in the distance? And how about now? So what's actually happening here? Well, making these adjustments is just one way to give the object something called atmospheric perspective. An atmospheric perspective describes how the light reflecting off of particles in the atmosphere affects the appearance of distant objects. The more air particles between here and there, the more reflecting light there is. So let's use this knowledge in a real world scenario where we can add atmospheric perspective to make objects look further away, thus enhancing depth and preventing your landscapes from turning out flat and we'll do it all using the most basic of tools in Photoshop, the brush. So this is a very simple technique and it's a great place to start when it comes to working with depth in your landscapes. There is more to learn and I'll show you that after this example. First thing I'm gonna do is just use the object selection tool to grab a quick selection of the sky. I'll just click on the sky. Photoshop does a good job of selecting that. So what I'll do first is now add a new empty layer and then to that layer, I'm going to add a layer mask. And because we've got that sky selection active, it's going to load that selection directly into the layer mask. So anything we do in this layer only affects the sky. Right, now I want to make a selection of just these mountains. Now this is probably not the most accurate way to do this, but it's just a quick demonstration. If you want to spend a bit more time to create a more accurate selection, well, you are definitely going to want to create a more accurate selection for your own images. Like I said, this is just for demo purposes. So we have the mountains there now selected and we can do the same thing. We'll add a new layer and then add a layer mask to that. So the technique, unbelievably simple. What we're gonna do is select the brush tool and I'm gonna use a really low opacity, maybe as low as five to 10%. Let's split the difference and call it seven. And now in the layer where we have isolated the mountains, I'm just gonna click on the layer thumbnail there. I'm gonna sample a color from somewhere in the mountain here. So I'm gonna hold Alt or Option on the keyboard and sample a kind of a medium-ish to light color, something like that, just an average color that's found in this area here. And I'm literally just gonna brush into the mountains to add this color into the image there. If I turn this layer off and on now, we can see that I have essentially lowered the contrast of the mountains there. And as a result, they look further away in the scene. So by pushing the mountains back in the scene, the foreground stays where it is. That by definition means we've technically added depth in a way that looks like a kind of natural atmospheric perspective. Now we'll come back to the mountain layer in just a minute once we've had a look at the sky. So we'll do the same thing for the sky because the yellows down here are probably a bit too dark and heavily saturated. And that's what's kind of bringing the sky forward in the composition. We want to push the sky back really. So we'll do the same thing. We'll click on the layer for the sky. We'll sample a light yellowy color here. Alt or option on the keyboard and then just click on the color in the sky there. And I'll probably make this a little bit lighter. So I'll click on the colors over here on the side and then I'll just reduce the saturation like so. And now with this brush, I'm only gonna go, say, sort of halfway across. So I'm just gonna add a bit of lightness there to the sky in the background. And maybe I'll just bring it across, blend it a little bit that way, but then I'm gonna use some of the color over here to do the same thing on the right-hand side because the sun was over here on the left. It's more yellow than it is uh, over on the right here, which is more kind of red. Or if I sample that, that's more of a peachy color. So let's do that, we'll sample it, make it a bit lighter. 
and then brush just along the edge of the horizon there. Maybe I've pushed it a little bit too far there. So we can maybe just bring the opacity of this layer down. Okay, let's come back and have another look at the mountains here. There is something we can do to further increase the separation between the foreground and the background. And if we just grab, well, let's press D on the keyboard to switch to the default brush colors. We'll switch to a white foreground color. Now we might be able to do this just with a round soft brush. So let's have a look at that first. And what we can do is just trace the edges here. This image kind of allows us to add a bit of a sort of a foggy effect in there behind that first ridge. So now we're increasing the contrast of this line here and just creating a bit more separation. Now the thing is, this technique is a great place to start making your landscapes look less flat, but understanding the full relationship between light, contrast, saturation and distance, that's what's really gonna take your photos to the next level. And you can watch this next video here to learn all about that.